In this section, we'll demonstrate the DG700 simulator, which is an active gauge which you can project on a screen. So if you're demonstrating the DG700 or demonstrating the equipment in front of a class, you can project it on the screen, or if you're doing an in-field demonstration, you can project it onto a wall. So this is an active gauge. Um, I do have one tube connected uh, from the reference on channel A to the outdoors. Um, we don't have much temperature or wind today, but, but you can see there'll be a little bit of fluctuation on that outdoor pressure. Um, you can click on the, on the taps um, to make a hose appear. Um, so I'll connect a green hose there and input on channel B. If I click it once, I'll get green click it again, I'll get red. So you can show the tubing connections however you have it connected and you can toggle through different colors if you'd like to use different colors. Um, so you can see we do have an active screen, it is an active gauge. And then you can just show the, the um, um, different uses, different buttons on the gauge. I'll start out with mode and go clockwise around. Uh, the mode button, um, uh, reflects mode up on the lower left section of the gauge. Um, it says mode here and then above that it shows what the mode is. So PR, PR, pressure, pressure. If we click mode once, changes to PRFL, pressure flow. So pressure channel A, flow channel B, pressure flow. Click it one more time and we go to pressure flow at 50 mode. So channel A is reading pressure Channel B, instead of reading the flow through the fan as it would with the pressure flow mode, it's not reading the flow through the fan. What it's reading is what the flow would be if it were at 50 pascals. So once we get over 10 pascals, it'll alternate between low and a number. When it gets up high enough, it'll it'll just display just a solid, um, a solid number here, which is um, uh, the flow adjusted for what the flow would be if you were at exactly 50 pascals. So that's pressure flow mode. Um, pressure flow at 25. Well, again, once it's over 10 pascals, it'll start displaying a, a, a CFM at 25 pascals. Um, go to click one more time, pressure velocity, PRV. So it um, what this will do is if you're using a pitot tube, um, and uh, a pitot tube has two taps on it. One will read static pressure, one will read, read total pressure, and the difference between total and static is velocity pressure. And this will convert velocity pressure in pascals to velocity in feet per minute. So what's being displayed on channel B is velocity in feet per minute. And then to get cubic feet per minute, you would multiply that by the square footage cross section of the duct that you're measuring. So square feet of the cross section of the duct times feet per minute would be cubic feet per minute. So velocity in feet per minute. Um, so I'm gonna to go to the pressure flow mode and then you can change your devices. Um, if, uh, so the default device is uh, is the blower door, and um, blower door three two twenty, and blower door four are blower doors outside of the United States. Um, duck blaster A is an older version of our duck blaster that uh, has a white fan housing. The original duck blaster, duck blaster B is the black fan housing. And there's not a big difference between those two as far as converting pressure to flow, but there is a difference. EXH is the exhaust fan flow meter. Um, and then we're back to blower door. And then um, units, you can, uh, you can change from Pascals is the default, Pascals and CFM, to Pascals in meters cubed per hour, uh, Pascals in liters per second or CFM. Um, if you're in the pressure pressure mode, um, if you're in the pressure pressure mode, the units can be um, inches of water column or pascals are the two options there. 
if you're in the pressure flow at 50 mode, you um, you can get meters cubed per hour at 50, liters per second at 50, or inches squared equivalent opening area at 50. So if you want to know uh, how big of an opening, equivalent opening, there is um, using the EOA method at 50, um, it'll display what that is. Once you get above 10 pascals, it'll display the leakage area. So that's units. Um, and then the configuration changes your your from open fan to ring A, ring B, ring C, and we actually do have a ring E and a ring D and a ring E also. So uh, the ring configuration, so config is uh, config up here and then it tells you which configuration you've used. And then time averaging, um, go to five second average and then it'll flash with a new um, a new reading every five seconds. You can go to 10 seconds or long-term average. Um, you can also use the cruise function of the gauge. Uh, well, let's go through baseline first. You can you can um, uh, use the baseline function of the gauge by clicking baseline, and then it will flash baseline on channel A, and then click start. Then baseline will stay solid, and it'll start counting up in seconds on channel B. And then once this number stabilizes for a few seconds, you can push enter. Now it's entered that baseline adjustment into the gauge. So um, the pressure you'll be building, changing the, the building by is um, um, the induced pressure. So you'll, it'll, it'll just display how much you've changed the pressure in the building by once you've entered the baseline in there. And then you can hit the clear button to clear that, uh, clear that baseline. Um, and then if you want to use the cruise function of the gauge, you just click begin cruise and cruise will flash here. You can adjust your target pressure by hitting the, the cruise target button here. And you can go to, because we're at CFM at 50, it'll only let us, um, use 50 pascals, but if we um, change our mode to pressure flow, um, it'll let us adjust that target. So if I hit uh, begin cruise, we've got cruise flashing, we've got 50 as our default. We can change our cruise target to 25, zero, or negative zero. Zero and negative zero um, come into play if we're, um, depending on if we're we're cruising a positive or or a negative pressure. We have to know on which side is zero to speed up the fan and which side of zero to um, um, we want it to decrease the flow of the fan. So there is a difference if we want to cruise um, zero or negative zero. Um, and then once we've chosen our cruise target, we simply hit start fan and um, and then to stop the fan, we'll hit stop. If it is able to, to get the building to 50, then it'll start beeping. Whenever the gauge is beeping at you, it's telling you it can't do what you've told it to do. You've told it to cruise 50. If it can't get to 50, it'll start beeping. Okay, so that's, um, that's our DG700 simulator, and that's a free download from our website. Thank you for attending our webinar, TEC Training Tools. The uh, webinar will be available on our website and on our YouTube site. Uh, it will be broken down into um, six shorter sections. And um, the software that we demonstrated during this webinar, the Bloater Simulator, ZPD Simulator, Zone Pressure Diagnostic Simulator, um, ZPDCU, the Zone Pressure Diagnostic Calculation Utility, uh, CSTAC, and the DG700 Simulator are all free downloads from our website. And the TEC Trainer is uh, available for purchase through the Energy Conservatory. So feel free to visit our website and, and download those free 
uh, training tools or feel free to, to email or give me a call if you have any additional questions. Thank you.